you know what they say about the judiciary and democracy, one of the three legs of uh, democracy, as a matter of fact. Well, with so much going on and so much expectations from the judiciary, let alone the recent conviction of former Delta State Governor, brings to bear or raises more questions, perhaps, than ever about Nigerian judiciary or the system in the country. Well, we'll focus on that this morning and we'll just give you some background reports about what's transpired and we'll be back. It was indeed an end to a long wait in the dramatic trial of the former governor of Delta State, Mr. James Sibori, who was accused of embezzlement and money laundering. And for the many supporters of Ibori who gathered at the Sadduck Crown Court in London today, when the judgment eventually came, it was no less a tensed moment. <laughs> Judge Anthony Pitt sentenced James Onanefe Ibori to 13 years in prison over allegations of fraud and embezzlement while serving as governor of Delta State. Earlier in the trial preceding the sentencing, the former Delta State governor on 27th of February pleaded guilty to 10 counts of money laundering and fraud totaling 50 million pounds, thus over 12 billion naira, a figure the judge said was ludicrously low. In his ruling, Judge Pitt said the court was unable to establish how much Ibori stole, saying Ibori's loot is unquantifiable, adding that the confiscation proceedings may shed some further light on the enormity of the sums involved. According to the prosecutor, Sasha Wiles, Ibori and his associates used multiple accounts at the banks to launder millions of pounds, some of which were used to buy expensive London properties and other luxurious possessions, including a private jet. Although Ibori's lawyer, Nicholas Punel, strove hard to put up a strong defense for him, his efforts make no difference. He said Ibori's lawyer, Bradish Gohill, misled the former governor into engaging in the lawful arts of money laundering. When called to give testimony on Ibori's character, a former Nigerian international footballer, John Fashionu, said that Delta State witnessed immense development under Ibori, especially in the area of sports, adding that Ibori built stadium where repentant militants trained and transformed to sports stars. Ibori got a discount off a possible 24-year jail term. Meanwhile, the convict had 645 days deducted from his sentence due to the time he's already spent in prison while the case lasted. That leaves the former governor with at least seven years of imprisonment in the British jail, together with his wife, Theresa, sister, Christine Ibori, business associate, Udamaka Okoronko, and his former lawyer, Badresh Gohil. I drafted the 170 uh, count charges against Ibori. I took him to Kaduna court, and uh, the kind of politics that happened thereafter, you will recall that that file was recalled from me, by the former Attorney General Handuka. And he took it over and he said, no, Rotimi must not prosecute this case. And I handed over the file to them and they did those the, the kind of arrangements. For a clear case like that, I've never drafted a charge in my life that the court will say there is no a case or no prima facie case. Because I have my conscience. I have, it, it, I'm a man of um, conscience. And I, whatever I do, the fear of God is always paramount in whatever I do. I saw that I, there was a good case against uh, James Ibori and only for the fight to be withdrawn from me during um, Andoka's regime and uh, given to a lawyer who has never prosecuted economic crime before to do that kind of complicated case and uh, they allowed the, uh, the accused to go free but today we have vindicated. EFC is vindicated and in fairness to the uh, madam, uh, the former chairman, he was not the one who collected the file from me. It was Anduka who insisted that I must not prosecute Ibori because Ibori was so special to them in that government. So, but today, justice has been done. Just everybody, uh, I am vindicated. The FCs have been vindicated, and all of us are vindicated. But we should they try to de-emphasize politics, even the, from uh, the fight against uh, corruption. Well, then, uh, there you have him. Mr. Nyekachi Obani joins us now. He's a legal practitioner. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you. Well, well his you. submission, uh, Mr. Jacobs, uh, quite interesting. Justice may have been done outside the country. That's right. But again, it points to the fact he says politics. Is politics taking over the judiciary now? That would be a sad commentary, wouldn't it? Very profound statement, you know, because uh, we 
you read all the papers now, you re listen to radio station concerning this Iboris matter, everyone will be doing this blame game on the judiciary without a critical analysis of uh, the intrigues uh, that went into Iboris uh, trial and his escape from Nigeria. So that we, and of course in this country, Nigerians have short memories. We forget easily. If you could recall Iboris saga in this country, I followed it up. And I have every fact concerning that particular matter, especially from an online publication called SaharaReporters.com. He gave you, he gave us a very good account of Iboris saga, up to the point of escape to Dubai, and when he was extradited to the UK and all that. Now Ibori matter started in court of uh, uh, in Kaduna, uh, Federal High Court. At the time, the lawyers came up with the issue that the offense was committed in Asaba, so he should not be tried in Kaduna. The court went along and agreed with them, and the matter was uh, struck out. Now, there was an arrangement now to build another federal high court in Asaba, because there was no, none in existence in Asaba at that point in time. Now, so our reporter reported at that point in time that the, the government of Delta was the one arranging the property was one trying to build the federal, buy the property for the federal high court. And nobody raised any eyebrow. Nobody said this is wrong. He went along and did it and then handed over the federal high court to the government. The next thing was the constitution of the, the court that we try Ibori. Sahara reporters also raised the alarm that Ibori is the one choosing the judge that will handle this case. Sahara reporters raised the alarm that Ibori was the one choosing the prosecutors that would prosecute his case. Ibori was the one choosing his lawyer that would defend him. Nobody raised any eyebrow. Remember that for two or three times, Justice Marcel, I woke lay, postponed delivering judgment in Ibori's matter. Ibori was so sure of the fact that his case would be dismissed to the extent that he even accepted an, appoint, you know, an, an invitation by the University of Benin to deliver a funders lecture uh, program on the day that judgment was supposed to be delivered because he was aware that nothing will happen. An online reporter, Sahara, raised the alarm that the judge himself has been compromised, named the amount of money that was given to him. Nobody raised any eyebrow. Should so the point is that it, yeah. it is easy to just keep on probably at this point in time blame the judiciary. The okay. point is that in developed countries, in sane societies, when alarms like that are raised concerning an institution, there are institutions that monitor those other institutions. Who should have done it in this case? Beautiful. Now you have na na uh, the National Judicial uh, Council, you have the Chief Judge, I mean the, 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 the CJN, the Chief Justice of the Federation, that is the head of the judiciary in Nigeria. I mean with all those alarms being raised, even EFCC could have even come in at that point in time. That is how it is done all over the world. I mean, just look at this man that is the most powerful man in the world, that is Obama. If tomorrow somebody sits down in America and writes anything about him, any scandal whatsoever, I can assure you that the White House will be trembling. Because the public opinion will be there. Institutions that will now monitor and find out whether those allegations were true will just swing into action. They don't wait for any feeling whatsoever. Yeah, but from his submission, he yes. did say that there was a calculated attempt yes. to emasculate and possibly strangulate EFCC yes. from taking over that case. And we saw it. Yeah. And much as a lot of people vilified the EFCC at mm. that time, yes. now he says, well, it wasn't the EFCC. It was the AGF at the time. Yeah, he wanted me to say, but he mentioned it now. That's why I was saying that. If the AGF who happens to be a member of the executive was doing all that, what did the presidency do? Because a situation, you know, as I said earlier, there is no proper mechanism to monitor institutions independently of, of any ASOROG or any uh, governor's office and all that. Because what happened in this country is that if offense is alleged by any institution, people begin to look towards a particular institution. Oh, what is your feeling? If the institution is meant to cleanse, they will now go ahead and cleanse. If the institution has an ambivalent attitude, oh, we don't want to, you know, prosecute this matter. I, re I, 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 really, I really don't see how easy it will be for some Nigerians to take what you just said, that they shouldn't even put the blame on the doorstep of the judiciary. They see the judiciary as, uh, well, having failed the country in that regard because, uh, well, we have the NJC, we also have the NBA. And when all of that came to the fore, you don't expect the market woman to be the one to champion the cause, uh, to look into all of those allegations. If everyone has so much uh, belief in what they read in any of the papers or online publications, then the NBA should have waited in if the NJC wasn't doing anything. So why didn't they do all of that? By my statement, I'm not exculpating uh, the judiciary. 
you you also listen to some people who probably when they get judgment or justice from the judiciary, they all sing this song that judiciary has become the come. I mean, the, the last hope of the common man. Go and ask to uh, Adam Oshimole when he got the, the court to restore his power. What of Arik Wesela and all that? You hear them sing all that. But when there is a problem also in the judiciary, we must also locate it. I'm not exculpating them because it was it was Justice uh, Marcel. I will I will play him. That is still in the judiciary that also, you know, dismiss all the 170 count charge. Even the one that is so obvious that Ibori at the time bribed uh, uh, Nuhuri Badu with $15 million. And that amount of money was taken by Nuhuri Badu and lodged in Central Bank as an evidence, as an exhibit. That was part of the charge that wrote to me, Jacob, even included in that 170 count charge. And Justice, Justice Marcel sat down and said, those offenses are not linked whatsoever to Ibori. I'm not making any excuse. What I'm saying is that in any country... You don't set up an institution and allow that institution to be the final arbiter on it because there must be another institution watching the other institution in order to ensure there is sanity in the country. Or else, there is, some institutions are subject to abuse because they're being manned by human beings who are, if, who are fallible. So you must also set an institution to monitor institutions so that if an institution is messing up, another institution comes in. Another institution is also watching the one that is watching the... You know, so that's what it's been done. In this particular yes. case, I mean, you mentioned the NJC. Yes. What <coughs> happened with the NJC? Why weren't... Why? NJC got a, 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 a petition against Justice Marcel Awokule <coughs> and they invited him. All of a sudden, nobody heard anything concerning that particular petition. People were writing that, look, this man has been compromised in this particular case and he should not be allowed to continue with this particular trial. For two times or three times, Marcel could not deliver that judgment because of the intervention of NJC. But at the end of the day, something happened. But these are issues we people don't like saying in this country. As I said earlier, in this country, when anything like corruption allegation is made against any political elite, people begin to look, look towards one direction. Oh, what is the feeling of this institution, Asoro? Oh, do they have feeling of prosecuting this matter? James Ibori was arrested by Nuhuri Badu. Two weeks after arrest by Nuhuri Badu, he lost his job. He was hounded. He was removed from EFCC and taken to judge for, for a cause that he, he didn't deserve. Before you know it, there was a disciplinary committee that was set up to try him. And before you know it, his life was in danger that Nuhuri Badu had to run out, of, run, out, run out of this country. And then the next thing was that Nuhuri Badu was dismissed. Because there was a particular institution then who was Com compliant. He, I mean, was not in any way interested in prosecuting Ibori. And for New Ribadu having the terremity to arrest I mean, uh, uh, Ibori, that was a major financial of his political office. Then the man must go. And that was what happened. So it doesn't happen that way in any country. Institutions are different. You don't look towards a, a White House to prosecute any person in, in, in America. When an offense has been committed, institutions will sing, swing into action because they have the statistical power. It, it, you don't begin to look whether Asorok is bent towards it. Why Ibori ran out of this country was now a new government came in who now felt that this man should not go scot-free and hounded him and he ran away to Dubai. If another government that loved Ibori was in power, Ibori wouldn't have even been convicted in UK, as well, I speak to you that, today. That is, so uh, that's why your country is not correct. Something is wrong with your nation. Mr. Bernie, because that, you is, must that, correct is, it. that is also debatable yes. because we saw some uh, Nigerians. When you talk about this particular administration and you say because a new government has come in, yes. some say it doesn't seem good, it doesn't seem right. I said the new government uh, is all out to fight corruption or to fight, uh, uh, yes, uh, malpractices mm -hmm. genuinely. They say, well, it's just also selective. So if you talk about what we saw before this new government came in, mm. some of those Nigerians we saw in the UK, they also say, well, this government also has something up for them to explain, some explaining to do, because they're doing all of this selectively, which shouldn't be the case. Now, we go back to the NJC matter, which Marco was trying to say now. If you say there's a body to monitor maybe the activities of, yes, the, yes, of the judiciary, yes, and in this case, the uh, judge in that particular matter. And if the NJC never did all of that, never wrote any kind of petition against uh, or conducted any probe against the judge, That's right. who should have done that? That's you still haven't even given us uh, a definite answer. Have Which other body well, That is where the, the, the yeah, so-called National Assembly comes in. As I said earlier, institutions are not... Oh, the National Assembly has a... Uh, yeah, they have a role. Because they, they have this what you call oversight function. That's why I said in any country, institutions are set up. There are all those monitoring them. And the final institution that monitors is the people. The people. If the National Assembly fell, the people now will rise up and say, this is wrong. We cannot allow because there is something that is common to humanity. The right to know what is wrong and what is right. When God, man fell in the Garden of Eden, God said, look, this man, people now have, I mean, Adam, have knowledge of what is wrong and what is right. Let us get him out of the system or else he will go and take the fruit of life. 
and then now begins to live forever. So man has an idea of what is wrong and what is right. And what Britain has done is that com that trade that is common to humanity, what is right, has been done by another country, that, and that's supposed to be done by your own country because somebody has committed an offense, has offended the law, you allow him to escape justice. Somebody took his own personal money, followed him up to Dubai, extradited him to his own country, and tried him from April to April, within one year. Whereas you have several governors that have been tried for almost two or three years in your country, Mr. and they have not been convicted. No, a, a, a moment here, so yes. just marry this. Uh, yes. th there's also a possibility that the judiciary is not even to blame here. The government as well is not to blame, because if you don't have evidence, how can you prosecute? Remember in this case in the UK, it was as a result of the hard disk found, okay, in the office of Mr. Gohill, the prosecutor that led to all of this. So if there was nothing like the hard disk that was found about money laundering, don't you think that nothing would have been done to Mr. Ibori because nothing was found here in the country? That is not true. I told you of one particular, let me not even begin to mention the 169 count charges. The one that has to do with the money that he used to bribe uh, uh, Nuhu Ribadu was one of the part of the count charge that was preferred against him. And he read that you, Ibori, gave one $15 million to Nuhu Ribadu in order to bribe him, in order to compromise him, not to prosecute, not to arrest you. And that money was taken by Nuhu Ribadu and lodged in Central Bank. And in Central Bank, that money is still there, confirmed by, 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 by Sasanusi Lamido, confirmed by Soludo, that there was an amount of money that was lodged, that was a bribe money. That was part of the counter. So you cannot say there was no evidence to convict him here. There was several evidence. There were issue of corruption. There was issue of money laundering. There was issue of uh, the other network that he was involved. Those evidences were produced. Now the court did not even go into the trial. It has never happened before that at the preliminary stage. You didn't even take a plea. You didn't take even a plea. You, know, you went ahead and dismissed the case. Not even struck out. The matter was dismissed at that preliminary without any without going to trial. It has mm -hmm. never happened. Mm -hmm. And an um, online publication, as I told you at that point in time, was even reporting that this man has made up his mind to dismiss this case. He said it before the, the, the judgment was delivered. And that this man has been compromised. And he mentioned the amount of money. And even mentioned the account where the money was transferred. Nobody bothered to investigate. There are so many absurdities in this country. And that's why we are saying that we must lay our life for this nation in order to save this nation for the sake of our children because many things that are going on is being done wrongly and that's why we become a parian nation nobody respects you as a nation we Do must begin to do things that are right in this nation does it mean that even the lawyers who are not happy with the way things are going right mm -hmm. from the way judges are chosen yes. the contribution by states yes. the way cases have been dismissed yes. the way judges handle cases the way some lawyers also handle some of these matters yes. Is it that there's nothing they can do about it on their individual level? Individual level you would do, but there are institutions that are empowered under the law to do these things, to monitor and to ensure that is proper sanity. In the country, you as an individual, as an individual, there's a limitation to what I can do. There's a limit to what I can do. I can come here and talk about it, but what powers do I have under the law? To probably now go and arrest, to even probably you know consider the panel to investigate. Okay, look at what has happened now with yesterday's report from the uh, panel that was set up on the oil subsidy. They have made a recommendation of that that the, those institutions must refund one trillion dollars. It's a soft landing this Naira. package. Uh, what Naira? I can assure you that which institu institution in a, a country you know where there is sanity, an institution now that is empowered that will spring up and ensure that that money is recovered. But I can assure you that that money in two, two years' time, you know, no, no one neither will be refunded. Because the institutions will be like Adasiko. Nobody is monitoring each, each person. He has given them a soft landing. When you say one trillion NMPC, which NMPC will refund any money? Which any marketer will refund any money? In this country, watch it whether any one trillion will be refunded. That is the country we are talking about. There, a, there, is a, there is a country where there is sanity, there is a country where there is no sanity. Somebody has made a recommendation now, this money will be refunded. At the end of the day, no one neither will be refunded to the post. Is it, is it an NPC that will refund any money? Run by who is, who is heading NPC? Well, Minister of it, Petroleum it, will it, refund any one cover to which you cover us. It's getting bad now, such that, I mean, we're having people making all sorts of comments. Look at yes. this one coming in from uh, Ananda. He says, concerning the terrorist matter, I don't see any of our courts convicting the senator who was fingered for terrorism. Yes. Maybe we should try him in some foreign court. Yeah, this people is, are even suggesting is, maybe we should sad. concession. Yes, yeah, so even some Nigerians are saying, can we concession some of our government agencies, like probably the judiciary? 
Because if Britain could convict this man within a period of one year, and you have so many governors who have been on trial for the past uh, uh, four or five years, and you have not even gone beyond the preliminary stage, and you saw a serious government that sat and have all the evidences all you know got in together and then you know went ahead and the trial where well, you were following it on online you were following it on say and then at the end of the day commission came within one year because this trial of Ibori started last year 2011 and that was in april and then in, in april 2012 we had conviction so uh, why is it on our own you know two mm -hmm. four five years you have not even gone beyond the plane the what lawyers do is that i thought if, you were going to give us an answer to that yes, why is it in our in our situation yes because if there is seriousness on the part of your government then we get them convicted or discharged and acquitted now you know what they do when the matter is charged to court they hire the best lawyer the best senior advocate of nigeria they come with issue that the court has no jurisdiction that is the first application they will bring and so you now be battling with the issue of duty okay the court now comes up and say i have jurisdiction Oh, the man goes on appeal and then brings a motion for stay of, uh, of any proceeding in the lower court. And before you know it, the matter goes to the Supreme Court and the matter Supreme Court make, makes a pronouncement. Oh, the lower court has jurisdiction over this matter. You now come back. The lawyers now come up with another application that those offenses mentioned have no link whatsoever with the accused person. We have not gone into the main trial. We are battling with preliminary issues. So the judge now will now be battling whether there is looking at the issue whether there is any link whatsoever with the offense to the offender. After which, you go on court of appeal, and before you know it, five years is gone. And the man wins an election into the Senate. And now even begin to claim that he also has immunity. I mean, most of your governor that have been tried entered into the Senate. And we are making laws for you. I mean, they got into the Senate. After they have been charged by EFCC and they are facing criminal trials. You didn't debate them. They won election. And even in the Senate, they were now claiming as honorable senator member. Okay. And then they were telling you that they have immunity almost even in the Senate. You know, and all. So no country runs that way. That is my let position. Us, let's take a look at the issue of jurisdiction. I mean, in terms of, the, you know, when this matter started, when this case started, like you rightly pointed out, it started up in the north somewhere in Kaduna. Yes, Kaduna. If yes. had to bring it down to Asaba. Yes. Should we have had that kind of situation <clears throat> Is there no law saying anything about anywhere corruption is found? You know, the case can go on from there. Because if you look at what has happened now, even though it was hard to prove corruption cases against him and he only admitted to charges of money laundering, yes. can we say can we say that the, the charge of money laundering was committed only in the United Kingdom and as such, that's where, you know, that's why he has been tried there? Or could he have been tried, assuming they could prove corruption charges mm. against him? Could he have been tried on corruption charges committed here in Nigeria? Yes, uh, the, the, the position is, is the cardinal case. I think the matter is before the Supreme Court now to determine whether, you know, any man who has committed offense in Nigeria can be tried in any of the jurisdictions of the Federal High Court. I think that there is an appeal on that. But it's a technical thing, you know, even at that. I agree that probably you say, don't try him in, uh, in Kaduna, bring him to Asaba. The government would have come in and do the right thing by establishing a court, if there is no court in Asaba, not allowing a state government, who of course was installed by, uh, by Bibori himself, to be the one you know, building the, the you federal know, there, You know, there was an election, so it would be very hard for anyone to say someone was installed. It's, uh, okay, for there was an election, was but an the election. point is that, you know, that, that's why you journalists sometimes, you don't say the way, we say the way it is, you know. You know no, the way it is. No, the way it is that somebody installed him, he's his cousin no, no, and all that. No, he was no, the, the way, governor the way then, it is, and he made it possible for his cousin to be governor. The way it is, the way we see it on television, and not once, It's not the way we in Nigeria see it. People have gone there to, to, to vote. So, no problem. But I'm saying the way you see it as a, is not the way we Nigerians see it because he was his cousin and he made it possible for him to become the governor. But the point is this. The point I'm trying to say is that government shouldn't have allowed that to happen in any same country where you have such a person, a state government that is, I mean, governor, former governor has been tried. You shouldn't have allowed the state government to be the one now funding the, you know, the, the building of the court. It shouldn't have been the one. And then when the man that is being chosen Somebody raised an allegation that this man is not, you know, is, has been compromised. What any sane society will do is to remove the man immediately because you will not allow anything to go wrong. The bane of Nigeria, Suleiman, the bane of this country, as I speak to you today, is corruption. And if there is anything, we must put all our resources to fight in order to ensure that Nigeria becomes a country where all of us shall be proud of, is issue of corruption. But Mr. Bani, but but not fighting it. Mr. Bani, you know, you said that uh, some, some people raised the alarm that the judge had been compromised. Yes. Did the prosecuting counsel yes. raise any alarm that the judge had been compromised? He would have chosen. The at, at the time. What did the bar, what did the disciplinary committee in the bar do about this matter? It has nothing to do with it because somebody wrote a petition now to the NGC. So this mm -hmm. is what is going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as I said earlier, judgment in that case was postponed three times. Now we will not know, you and I will not know, we will know what went under the ground. 
on the ground. You don't know what happened. I am sure at that point what in time. They, know. Okay, you, know, you, want me to tell you, you want me to tell no, you? Okay, no, let, me tell you let me tell you what happened. At that point in time, there is issue of what is the feeling of the highest body concerning this matter. Can this man be tried? Can we go ahead and put all our snap into operation and make sure that this man is convicted? Now, if you get the feeling that these people there are not interested in this man's conviction, then you, because of you don't want to lose your job. Are you following me? Now, the pensions come. Somebody was being prosecuted and taken to, to court by EFCC. What was the feeling? The following day, the man got to office. He got a letter of promotion. Is that the feeling? So what, what feeling do you have about that? Because it tells you the feeling that you guys are wasting your time. At the end of the day, nothing will come out no, of it. No, but there are those you who want, still believe yes, that yes. no matter what happens, yes. the judiciary is an independent arm of government. Yes. They can reform themselves no matter what any arm of government thinks. I agree with you. The day we wake up, wake up and say enough of all this nonsense, we must run this country the way it's being run, and no matter the feeling of anywhere, any person elsewhere, we must begin to do it right. Then we, we begin to get it. I agree with you completely, my brother. It's the moment you say, even if it means me losing my job, just like Salami has lost his job, and then we have him in record that that man, God will bless him, bless his children, he will never have any problem with his family. And that's the kind of thing that happened. You damn the consequences and damn the job they have given to you and say, let me do the right thing in this nation. For once. And then other people begin to back you. But when nobody is backing you, that is where you have problem. Salami got a say that he was on, almost becoming a low fighter, even not for some people that came together and said, this man must not be sacrificed on the altar. Let's, let's, let's put a voice. So there must be that also support, because if only you become the righteous man in this country, and only he's fighting it, you will look, you will look so stupid. You will look so, 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 so despair that only you in the country is fighting, and the majority are not seeing it the way you are seeing it. So I'm saying that there must also be support from every other person. The journalists must support, the lawyers must support, the judiciary must support, everyone must wake up to save this nation. But if only you is the only fighter, that is a problem. All right, what, what can you tell us about this before you go? Uh, Diary Mustafa, that's a CGN. We understand he has tendered his resignation. Who's who? Nominates, uh, that's a CGN. Has Nominated the female successor, Maria Mokhtar Aloma. Any thought on what's going on? Has resigned? It is a news to me. As a result, but I know his time is expiring, uh, I think, this year. Uh, July, at about July. July uh, no, so he has, has, yes. no, okay. he has already indicated his intention. He's intention to retire, yeah. I think that's so that's normal, normal procedure? That is normal procedure, yeah. You give them, you know, I mean, he's a righteous man. He doesn't want to stay beyond his, uh, his tenure. Maybe the government uh, may want to extend, but he's saying, look, this is my time. When it comes, allow me to go. Is that a good it's feeling? A, it's a good feeling. I mean, that, that man within the short time. If you allow such a man, this man that just came in at the CJN, to stay for some yeah. time, I know I'm, 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 I'm not happy that he's, he's going because there are statements he has made. There are some pronouncements this man has made that is in conformity with my feelings. You know that this is the way you run judiciary. But unfortunately, he has a very short time to stay and all that. So I have a good. You know, the man is going on a good note.